I, I like that, um, you know, kind of elimin elimination diet uh, in the beginning. So you're eliminating um, all gluten, dairy, um, and um, grains and sugar. Grains and sugar. Okay. Initially, right? For those first 30 days, because we don't know what's irritating you. Mm -hmm. So we're taking on the, the classic irritants off. Remember, this is just, this is not forever. I don't, no one could do this forever. <laughs> And so you don't want to set people up for failure by saying, this is how you have to live for, forever. Thanks, Dr. E. I'll never come back. Temporary. And I always do it in the beginning, right? Some people do it the other way. Some people eliminate slowly. I think we eliminate in the beginning because that's when the patient's most motivated. They're mm. not feeling well. They just came in. They're ready to do the work. So capture it, right? It's like that first month at the gym. Capture it. Because if their symptoms, if they start feeling better, that's it. They're, they're ready to continue, right? But if you go slowly and remove things, people don't want to have things removed six months later after made the decision to start to do this. I think it's harder psychologically. Yeah. Because I know there's that mindset that removes things slowly. Yeah. Now, that being said, again, patient dependent. If I have a patient I'm still talking to about whether or not McDonald's is appropriate, that's a patient that I may not go completely and we could just talk about what we could order at McDonald's, right? Maybe we could order the salad, right? So some patients are not quite ready there. So it is patient dependent. And some patients, you know, when you're talking about fasting, you know, like if you take their coffee away with the way they have with their cream and their sugar, they'll walk out, right? So sometimes you have to the world do collapses. <laughs> so sometimes you have to be patient where they are. But, just describing the ideal scenario. Right, right. Um, so I like your approach that you kind of, you know, you don't go crazy with testing right from the start. You go with the diet change and you do, you know, some more basic set of labs. And then you, you, you watch how they do with this <clears throat> new diet. Yes. And uh, maybe some supplements. And if things don't get better, then you peel the onion again. Yes. yes. Yeah, I like that because some doctors, they will, you know, do, you know, five, six hundred dollars or a thousand dollars test all at once. And they're bombarding. You can't eat this. You can't eat that. Oh, you've got, <laughs> you know, you're toxic. And so we should do some chelation therapy and you need to, you know, here's this hormone. Here's this, you know, other, yeah, other herb. It just, it gets very crazy, I think, and overwhelming for people. You know, you brought up such a good point because if you test everyone, we probably all have some heavy metals. We probably all have some mold. We probably have all have some hormonal imbalances. So it's not just a question of finding it, but is that what's causing your symptom, mm -hmm. right? So if I clean up your diet and everything is perfect, you're symptom-free, then do I really need to chelate you just because I found it in there, right? I don't, it, it, that's not causing your symptom. So why would I want to find, now, if I clean up your diet, you're moving, we're getting quality supplements, you're getting IV infusions, you're on point, you're still not feeling well, then yeah, likely something else is causing it and then we need to hunt it down. But you know, you, you try, so you try not to treat the test. And if you're just gonna test for everything, I think almost all of us in this polluted environment are gonna come up with positive for things, but it doesn't mean it's causing us symptoms. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it probably could still undermine us in some ways, but it is not, is not acute. So after you get everything addressed, you're feeling pretty good. And if you wanna further, yes, you know, on your biohacking journey, and then you can do some more uh, yes. There, there's endless tests. There's genetic yes. tests. There's <laughs> endless. Yes. Endless. Yes. Yeah. But I, I agree with you. But I, we, I let the patient lead the way. If they want to do more, we do more. If they're not there yet, we. I mean, I, I love a good hunt. Don't get me wrong. I just want to make sure. And the other thing is this. Let's just say you are mold toxic, and I have patients who are mold toxic. The treatment for mold toxicity is very taxing on the body. Right. We have to detox through the liver. So I want to make sure that we're going into that treatment in your best possible version of you, the version that's eating good quality food, already taking supplements, some NAC to like help, you know, get your liver ready for that process. 
So the timing is also about getting you as a host ready for whatever treatment we need to decide. If we're gonna to decide to do hormones, we wanna make sure that our hormones are balanced food-wise, that you're not, you don't have elevated testosterone because you're eating all these carbs and now I'm giving you this other stuff, right? Let's normalize the hormones that we can just by you know, balancing your insulin and your thyroid and everything else, but top down. And then if we need it as a host, you're ready to have the most optimal results by getting those hormones. Mm. 